Hi coaches, Ron Silico here. Uh, talking youth basketball today, and that certainly could apply to any level of basketball. You want your kids learning how to handle the ball, dribble it, learning how to do creative dribbling drills, different moves off your dribble, strengthen the weak hand, have a strong, strong hand, change speeds, change direction, all those kind of things. But as coaches, I think something that's just as important as teaching those concepts without a defender is getting kids used to going against defense. Because in a game, you're going to be guarded. And you have to learn how to read, read, the, re, read the defense, react, have a counter move, have a go-to move, and, and learn, how, learn what you can and can't do as a dribbler. And, and then that helps supplement your additional training as you're progressing as a dribbler. So here are a couple of thoughts and ideas, and please leave in the comment section other thoughts that you've done as coaches to get kids used to having, having a defensive presence in front of you. I'm going to talk about driving line in a moment, but just some basic dribbling drills, uh, one that we use fairly regularly is as a kid is learning how to dribble, they're going straight ahead, and we're teaching them to have their off arm up, they're dribbling. We've got a defender standing in front of them with their hands on their shoulders, and they're just kind of pushing against them with light resistance. And we're, we don't want the dribbler bowling over the defense. We don't, want, we don't want them pushing, but we do want that defender putting up a little bit of resistance. So there is, there is some strength component, some balance component that the dribbler has to do in terms of learning how to play through contact which is really important because you're not just going to be able to dribble anywhere you want without resistance. You're going to be going against defense. So the defense is pushing and they're just kind of backpedaling a little bit as they're leaning in and going up and down the floor that way. Um, and you could do that side to side. You could, you could do that in a zigzag. You could, you can go in straight lines, but that just helps provide some resistance uh, to it. The other one, uh, I don't like the I don't like the zigzag defensive drill because we don't want we don't want dribblers just going in a zigzag pattern without a reason. And what I mean by that is if the defense doesn't cut them off, why would we stop and why would we want that dribbler to stop and zigzag back? Now you could have zigzag scenarios in this one-on-one -on -one full court drill, which is what I prefer. But the defense has to earn it. They've got to turn them and make them go the other way, if that's what you're teaching philosophically. The other thing is, a lot of coaches teach, they want the ball on the outer part of the court. So why, if you're that kind of coach, why would you, why would you teach a drib, the defender to guard the dribbler and then turn them? If you're trying to keep them in a the spot, you would just keep them there up the floor. So the zigzag looks good. It makes you it makes you work hard, but I don't think there's a lot of game application to it. I think it's better to play one on one full court. Uh, some of the teaching points is having the kids use the pullback dribble, uh, stay off the sidelines, stay out of the coffin corners, uh, and then you also get a you get a, a game component where. They're trying to advance the ball, and you don't want them to lose their dribble. They've got to maintain their dribble up and down the floor, try to get a shot at the basket. Defense can test, box out. So I think it's much more well-rounded. You know, certainly there's a benefit of you could do a, having the zigzag, which is probably why coaches like it, is you can have a lot of kids working both sides of the floor. But I believe the better benefit and the more game-realistic benefit is just going one-on-one. -on -one up and down the floor. But that's the second level of resistance that I think is important is kids learning how to handle that. Uh, you could also go two on two with that. Uh, or you, what you could do one on one is either have a coach or a player kind of 
trailing the floor with them. So if that dribbler does pick up their dribble, they've got to pick it up, pivot, be strong with the ball, make a pass without traveling, throw it to the coach or player, the extra coach or player, and then they've got to get open again. And that gives you the chance to teach them how to cut, cut off, run at the defender's noses and pop one way or the other. Uh, but you could do that as well because you don't want kids getting in a bad habit. They've got to learn how to play when they pick up their dribble. So that's a scenario you could do. And if you're going two on two or three on three, you could certainly do that as well uh, with that. So that's the one on one full court drill. And then this brings me to the last point, which is driving line. And I love driving line because it teaches kids how to get open. They've got to square up, see the basket. And then they're trying to make plays off of it. They're trying to handle the ball. And defense has got to learn how to guard it. So it's, it, there's so many good things about it, both offensively and defensively. So here's one of the scenarios you could do. And you can use your imagination and have certainly many more. Just from a one-on-one -on -one perspective, if you've got a small team and you're able to use both, both, both baskets, you know, perhaps this is your scenario. Something that's really hard for kids to learn how to do is getting open without the basketball. So if the defender, if the ball's on the other side of the floor, as it is in this scenario, and the offense is trying to get to it, the defense is moving with them. And then what you often see young kids do is they just end up dancing back and forth. So this drill teaches them that they've got to get open. Passing and catching is good, good, I'm sorry, good cutting, passing, and, and squaring up to the basket. Those are things that kids really have to learn how to do at the youth level uh, to be successful later on as players. So teaching them to run out noses and then pop one way, the, way or the other, or make V cuts, go away, come, coming back, pop out, or basket cutting. Anytime teaching kids that, as they learn how to deal with overplays, and you can have different scenarios. You can have you can have the defender hugging that offensive player, saying, "Okay, get open." And the defense is really working hard. And you're, this is a good chance if you're teaching that inside hand defensive technique in the passing lane. Again, you get to work your defensive philosophies as well. Uh, but from here. If there's a pass and a catch, you play live. You go one-on-one -on -one full court, or I'm sorry, half court. Uh, this, as we just alluded to a little bit ago, in the one-on-one -on -one full court drill, this could be the outlet receiver after that first pass. So if the, if the offense loses their dribble, perhaps they've got to make a successful pass out of it before their turn's up. So you certainly have ways as a coach to control the driving line aspects. Uh, but that that does allow you to teach good habits where it's kids not just, they pick up their dribble and they say, oh, it's one-on-one, -on -one, I don't have a shot, and then they just throw up some garbage. This gives you a chance to, they've got to make a good pass out of it uh, and then go live. So you could do that, obviously, on any spot of the floor. You could have the, you can have players, you could have, you could have the ball and the dribbling up the floor, you can have them cutting. You can certainly go two on two. And you're learning how to set down screens or flare screens or back screens, whatever the scenario you want. And you could play it, play it live out of there. You could you can have a catch. Ball screen out of that. There's, there's a lot of different things you could do in driving line. But that just that just gives you a chance to your kids a chance in a in a rotational manner to get get a lot of reps in in, in this drill. So, and you, like I said, you could control it to you could at the younger youth level, pretty much a possess. You could have it be a possession. You could have it be one one chance to score. You get you could have a time limit. You got ten seconds to score. I mean, there's a lot of different controls you can put in as a coach to get what you want out of the drill, but. The driving line concept is a, is a really good one. Uh, you can work certainly out of the post. 
they're trying to work up and down the post, and they got offense moving along with them, or defense rather, going moving up and along with them. Uh, offense learns how to to get past to the hand. It teaches you it teaches you how to get the defender posting, get them on their back, give a target hand. Uh, offensive player throwing it throwing it to the hand. So a lot of different scenarios you could do out of this. You could even do it out of bounds and have them have them break out. Break, learn to break out and, and play that way. Uh, but driving line is a really good way to get your kids used to playing against contact, used to getting open, passing, catching, seeing rim, squaring up, having that good pivot foot, and then being hard to guard and make, trying to make plays off that. So, again, what we wanted to do today was just talk about ways to get kids used to going against defense in youth basketball. It's obviously a two-way drill, so you get to cha- get to teach your defensive techniques and fundamentals as well. You, know, you can have multiple scenarios. You can have one player on one side of the floor, one player on the other side of the floor, a passer, a lot of different things. You can have ball screens, off-ball screens. You could have, you could have a, an offensive player without us without a defender setting screens and the defense has to learn to fight through that and establish position. So a lot of different things you could do out driving line, but it does allow you to rotate through. You can do things such as, you know, you, if you make it, you get to stay on offense. The new defense rotates in and you can track that for points and make it a competitive game, which I believe is really important. As many practice drills as possible, have a winner and a loser and make things competitive. So, kids understand and it helps develop that competitive edge. So thank you for watching and please leave your comments in the comment section below so we can talk more about the game. Thank you.